Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more r slash matter butthole. And if you love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting the like, the subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack straight on with today's stories. Much love, guys. And our first story comes from Life After Love, who says, am I the arsehole for outing my ex as gay to get his mother off my back? It's a long and sucky story, but my 25 female, soon to be ex, 28 male, is gay and hid that from me. I found out because I caught him cheating and he as much admitted that he knew he wasn't attracted to me that way, but he wanted kids and a normal life. I don't care that he's gay, but I will never forgive him for leading me on so he could use me to have kids. So it's over. End of story. The problem is that his family are fundamentalist nutjobs, except for a few members and his mother. Is the interfering mother-in-law from hell. Not being related to her anymore is another plus to leaving. His family doesn't believe in divorce, so under the guise of picking up some paperwork and other items that were my exes, she cornered me about how I'm being childish and marriage is about commitment, forgiveness, and working through problems, etc. It became apparent that my ex didn't tell his family that he cheated. He told his mum that I was divorcing him because we weren't having sex often enough for me. I tried to be patient and explain that he had cheated and that's why. I wasn't going into greater detail because I know how his parents are and it's none of their business. Mother-in-law's advice, I kid you not, was that men are just that way. And if I wanted to have sex more and for him not to stray, that I should make myself more attractive to my husband and be a better wife. I lost the plot completely. It had been a sad and hard day already and that was the last straw. Here's where I might be the asshole. I told her that the only thing would make me more attractive to my ex would be a sex change operation and that I hoped he and his boyfriend adopted her some grandchildren so she could finally shut the hell up about it. Not my finest moment, but she just hit the worst and rawest nerve she could have and I exploded. It evidently turned into a huge family drama. He's probably going to be disowned and my ex called sobbing that I've ruined his life out of spite. I don't really know how to feel about it. I do feel bad for him that his parents are such awful people and there were just no good outcomes for him. But I also feel like he made his own bed here too. Edit. A couple of things from comments. Number one, there is almost no chance of violence. His family are funnies and not violent ones. They're more of the Mormon shunning type. One of his cousins came out and left the church after the initial protest. They all just stopped talking to him and basically treated him as if he were dead until he was ready to repent or whatever. They are passive aggressive, repressed and weird as all get out, but chances of anyone physically hurting him are extremely low. He's not financially dependent on them and has more than a decent job, so he can support himself easily if they kick him out. Two, he's known he was gay since before he met me. So this wasn't a new discovery or admission to himself. He has a boyfriend that he's been dating for six months before we were married. I went through his computer after catching them in the act and kicking him out and found messenger logs and other evidence going back to before he started dating me. He literally set this up so he could have the nice Mormon family on the surface to keep his family happy. That's it. He's never loved me at all. I was just the first girl to express a sustained interest. And we're going to start off with that bitch who says probably an unpopular opinion, but not the asshole. You got pushed into a corner and blamed for the demise of the relationship, which was ultimately because of his dishonesty. You didn't do it maliciously. Also, he wasted years of your life for selfish reasons, and I personally could never forgive that. Edit, OP was being constantly harassed, blamed, and basically defamed because her ex blamed her for everything. It wasn't malicious to out him and he should have taken more accountability for his role in all this. Edit two, the fact he plainly stated he only married her to have kids is beyond disturbing and automatically makes him the asshole, no questions asked. You do not dehumanize a person and treat them as a breeding animal for your own purposes because of your hidden sexuality, inexcusable. Mountain Monk 72 says not the asshole. It is a kind and great a good thing to try not out the person as it can be physically dangerous, but he also hasn't earned any kindness from you. 
He's the asshole that A, cheated, and then B, lied about the reason to his parents, leading his mum to harassing you. And he's also the asshole that was planning on essentially tricking you into a lifelong commitment while he likely would have been cheating the whole time had he not gotten caught now. So yeah, you are not the asshole. Edit, I'm surprised this is an unpopular opinion, huh? I still strongly do not believe you're the asshole. Responsible Judge 007 says not the asshole. You already know action has consequences. He lied to you to have a normal life. He cheated on you. He lied again to his family about the reason for the divorce and made you the villain. So it's on him how it went. Like you said, he made his own bed. Feel sorry for him, but that's it. He's in the situation because of his own actions. Vivid Ground 6632 says not the asshole. I see a lot of comments that say there's no reason to out someone, but it's his fault for lying to his family. Like if he owned up to the fact that he cheated and did not want to be with his wife, they probably wouldn't be harassing her. He needed to deal with his family if he wanted her to keep her silence. He lied to her their entire relationship to appear normal, which is an understandable feeling, but do it with someone who wants the same thing. Edit, I don't mean homosexuality is abnormal at all, I just didn't add that because I didn't think it was relevant. I just mean normal in their mind. And I've scrolled through like a couple of hundred comments here trying to find one of these you're the arsehole posts, but I can't find one. And one more from Claymore Claire who says, not the arsehole, fuck all the outing nonsense in those you're the arseholes. Being gay may bring you more struggles in a conservative environment, but absolutely nothing validates hurting and belittling someone, casting blame upon them for your faults. He cheated on you, his fault. He lied to his family, his fault. He knew who his family was better than you did. It's his fault for not being proactive about the situation. Life doesn't care about how long it takes you to accept who you are. The world doesn't stop spinning so you can figure it out. He should have talked with you and developed some kind of plan for dealing with this fallout. You were upset he was cheating, not that he was gay. If he had admitted to his fault, you'd have probably been an ally right now. He didn't, so you aren't. You told the absolute truth and nothing but that. That is his fault. Outing someone out of spite is vile. Setting the record straight when you are being slandered isn't. This man couldn't even give you an honest relationship. Why the fuck do you owe him anything? His life is falling apart because he's a dishonest cheating bastard, not because he's gay. Now, what do you guys make of our first story? As I said, I was trying to find some of them you're the arsehole post, but I couldn't find them. <laughs> I scrolled a few hundred posts as well. But let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below and we'll move on to another one. And our next story comes from Fantastic Cold 5722 who asks, am I the asshole for turning down the best man role and disrespecting the couple's wishes? I will provide some context before getting to the actual story. I come from a country where bridal parties like groomsmen and bridesmaids are not a thing. Some younger couples do wedding parties because it's a trend in the West, but it's definitely not something usual in our culture. Best men and maids of honor don't have the same role that they do in American weddings. They have the role of spiritual supporters in terms of religion. Now, it's usually just our version of best man and maid of honor in the wedding party, and if either of them are married, engaged, or in a long-term relationship, their SO is expected to sit at the head of the table, along with the bride and groom. It's unheard of here to pair maid of honor with best man and bridesmaids with groomsmen. Everyone is with their own SO, so they're chosen plus one. Now my best friend is getting married to his future wife. His wife has never liked my fiance since the very beginning. The reason was, was that his wife wanted to set me up with her cousin and I rejected her cousin by getting with my fiance and I ruined her plans. Throughout my seven year relationship with my fiance, my friend's wife was doing sketchy things in the beginning to get us to break up and later she'd just be extremely shady. I put an end to this behavior by speaking to my best friend about his partner's behavior and how she has no right to treat my fiance like that. Now onto the wedding. The bride decided she wants an actual wedding party full of groomsmen and bridesmaids. She was a very traditional person who always judged that new Western trend. So it came to our surprise how she chose to do that. Later it became clear when she announced that wedding party will be paired with each other and their SOs and their SOs will not be their SOs for the day and will have to play pretend with other wedding party members. As a best man, she wanted to pair me with the maid of honor, who was no other than the cousin she wanted to set me up with. I was expected to walk with maid of honor, 
dance intimately with Maid of Honor, sit with Maid of Honor during dinner while my SO would be seated with some random guest she didn't know. Seeing through the bride's intentions, I said that they either change the plan or I'm stepping down because I know what she's trying to do. She always hated that bridesmaid trend and she always frowned upon it, but suddenly she wanted to adopt every single part of American wedding culture out of spite for me and my fiance's relationship. My best friend said I either take it or leave it and the bride pulled the it's my wedding excuse and said that even if she wanted us to fake kiss with maid of honor, we should be expected to do it out of respect for her wedding day. I said I'm stepping down from the best man role if it means my relationship to my fiance is disrespected like that. Our friends understand my reasoning of stepping down but still claim I'm the asshole because I'm obligated to respect the couple's wishes no matter what. Now, first, I got to say that they must have that tradition wrong, the Western tradition wrong, because never have I heard like best man and maid of honor have to dance intimately and basically play a couple for the wedding. I think they just, isn't they just walk out together or something? And you were absolutely right in what you said. You know, from what you've said previously, it sounds like she's using her wedding, you know, the biggest day of her life to try and play this bullshit. I mean, what is going through this person's mind? It's their wedding and what's in their mind is trying to set you up with their best friend. It's absolute madness. And you're right to not want to disrespect your partner like that. So 100% not the asshole to me. But not now says not the asshole. Also, the bride is getting the Western tradition wrong. You don't pretend to be in a relationship with a maid of honor as the best man and you certainly don't fake kiss. Frankly, even in the States, I would turn down this request because it's completely wacky and hugely disrespectful to the fact I'm in a relationship. No one should ask you to act like you're not for a night. Proto Whale says she has the Western tradition completely wrong. The only time the best man and maid of honor are paired up is for the walk back down the aisle after the ceremony. They're not treated like a couple during the rest of the celebration. Not the asshole. Her demand is bizarre. OP replies that saying she says she send bridesmaids and groomsmen paired for the dance too and that they have a separate wedding party table so actual SOs aren't allowed. I've seen similar stuff too, to be honest, all over social media, so she's not entirely making it up. It's just that she frowned upon said trend until she saw how she could use it to her benefit to pair me with a maid of honor. Annie Jack says, not the asshole. I'm so glad you're standing up for your fiance. When people ask you, don't even make it about the bride. Simply say you're not comfortable performing the requested tasks, especially the things that require you are somewhat intimate with someone other than your fiance. Justin Walltown says, not the asshole, American here. In our custom, walking down the aisle together is quite normal. Pairing for the bridal dance is not uncommon either. Seating, however, is typically all of the groom's attendants on one side and the bride's on the other, or each person with their own SO. You are correct to refuse this request as she is obviously manipulating the customs as part of her foolish games. The part about kissing the maid of honor is especially nonsense and I've never seen such a thing at any wedding. And one more from DNA1727 who says not the asshole. If you aren't comfortable, just step down and your friend should understand. No such thing as respecting the couple's wishes no matter what. They can have their wishes as long as it doesn't involve you. Now, what would you do if you found yourself in this position? Surely it's got to be a not the arsehole. I can't see any other way around it. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below and we'll move on to the next story. And our next story comes from Comfortable Ad 7051 who asks, am I the asshole for inviting my brother's ex fling to Thanksgiving dinner and offending his girlfriend? I hosted Thanksgiving this year for the first time in my house. Some backstory here. My brother used to be friends with a girl named Anya. They didn't date, but they hooked up a couple of times. I love Anya and I always hoped she and my brother would end up dating. I met her through him and I ended up having a good relationship with her. We're not that close, but occasionally we text and talk on the phone and sometimes go out for coffee once in a while. We had an inside joke about how she'd be my future sister-in-law because I'll make sure to set her up with my brother. My brother is now dating his girlfriend, Sarah, for around three years. He went no contact with Anya two years ago because according to him, Anya had disrespected his girlfriend multiple times and was acting possessive of him. Once he told me that Anya told Sarah how I'm the future wife of your boyfriend. My brother apparently was offended with Anya's behavior and cut her off. I don't know if any of this is true and I don't care that much. 
I've kept in contact with Anya and she occasionally tells me how sad she is things turned out the way with my brother. And I said that if I had the chance, I'd set him up, but I'm not sure if it's easy to do that now. She says how she always wanted to be a part of our family and she feels like she lost her spot to Sarah. I assured her that I still consider her family even if she's not dating my brother and I always love her more no matter what. So lately, Anya and I got closer and I invited her on my Thanksgiving dinner that my husband and I hosted to our house. When my brother found out Anya is invited, he went off on me and said, I'm so disrespectful for inviting the girl who tried to break him and Sarah up and how this is disrespectful to him, Sarah and their relationship. He also claimed that I never gave a chance to Sarah and tried to get close to her because I'm so stuck with the idea of him dating Anya, which is creepy. I told him it's my house, I can invite whoever I want to there and don't need his permission. Anya and I get along perfectly fine and I don't care what she did to them. She'll always be the one that got away from my brother in my eyes. My brother said that he and his girlfriend won't attend my Thanksgiving dinner and they didn't. Anya still attended. My mum has sided with me and said that my brother and Sarah are acting like brats and they're toxic and insecure. But my husband and my father have told me I acted like the arsehole and I should understand where Sarah and my brother come from. What the hell is this? This is kind of creepy to me, I got to say. It does sound like for whatever reason you haven't given Sarah a chance and you're just in some sort of fantasy land about Anya and your brother and them being together. Why are you so involved in their life? Holy moly. And the fact that you disrespect your brother and Sarah and say, you know, you don't care about their feelings. You're inviting Anya no matter what, even if you don't come kind of thing. Knowing Anya told Sarah, I'm the future wife of your boyfriend. And you know, you don't care that much that that was said. You still prefer Anya, all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. How can you be okay with that? How can you be that disrespectful to your brother? And Sarah, of course. And your mum turns around and says that they're brats and they're being toxic and insecure. There's some weird dynamics going on in this one, but absolutely you're the asshole to me in this situation. I don't know what you were thinking. But Elfitch47 says you're the asshole. Stop disrespecting your brother's choices. Rainbow Blobbin says you're the asshole. You comment how it's creepy that your brother thinks you haven't given Sarah a chance because of Anya. But that's exactly how it seems. In your eyes, she's the one that got away from your brother. What the hell? You need to stop meddling in your brother's love life. It's his decision who he dates. Technically, you can invite whoever you like to your house, but you did it with an agenda. Sarahgill42 says, good lord, you're the arsehole. Your brother tells you that this Anya has tried to break him up and his girlfriend of three years, and you invite her to a family affair. Imagine how that must make Sarah feel. Imagine how it makes her feel that you are constantly wishing that your brother and Anya were together. Your actions in this seem very creepy. Your husband and father are correct in this. Sparkly Evil says, you're the asshole, a big one. And quotes, oh, it's my house. I can invite who I want. And then says, cut the bullshit. You're just controlling. Your brother must have a relationship slash sex with who you decide. You and your mother are just busybodies. Mind your own relationships. Hot Cross Bun says, oh, I love a hot cross bun. You're the asshole. Being friends with Anya is one thing. Going out of your way to encourage Anya's behavior towards your brother and his girlfriend is a total dick move and you know it. The kicker is that even if Anya succeeded in breaking them up, Anya will never get a shot with him again. You're going to age into a, is it just no mum or just no mother-in-law? Because if you're comfortable doing this to your brother, your kids and their future partners are in for a nightmare with you. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Now, what do you guys make of this one? What would you do in this situation if you was brother? I, I just can't work out what goes in people's heads sometimes, how they can think that this is acceptable behavior. And to me, it does sound creepy. What about you? Do you think it sounds creepy? Because I need to know. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and we'll move on to another story. And just as I was coming off the subreddit, I spotted this one and it sounded like a Nightmare Neighbors one. So I thought I'm having me a piece of that before we go. And it's from Snow Covered Hills 34 who says, Am I the arsehole for telling my neighbors their kids could not sled on my hill after they insist on me not letting my dog outside while they're out there? The house I recently moved into has a hill on the edge of the yard. I've talked to my neighbors a few times and they seem like nice people. A couple of days ago, we got our first real snowfall of the winter. My neighbors reached out to me and asked if I minded if their kids went sledding on the hill. They said that the previous owner of the house had let them use it, but they wanted to check with me. 
I hardly use that part of the yard and have no need for it when it's covered with more than a foot of snow, so I said sure. However, today they reached out again. They explained that they would like me to bring my dog inside while their kids are sledding because it makes them nervous. I told them that she's always tied up when she was outside and no danger to their kids. But they were welcome to keep their kids inside if they saw her out and that if their kids were sledding, I would stay out with her. They said that since the bottom of the hill was on their land, I couldn't restrict their access to it and that I was endangering their kids by letting my dog be outside and supervise with them. I repeated what I said and added that if they wanted to meet my dog, they could come over to meet her sometime. They just got more upset I wouldn't bring her inside and ended up threatening to call animal control on me for having an out of control dog. For reference, she may be a 40 pound older mixed breed who could probably not forge her way through the snow to where the kids are sledding, even if she wanted to. She just loves sitting out in the snow. I was very upset at this point and told them they could forget about their kids sledding on the hill and that if they were going to make unreasonable demands, they could not come onto my property. They tried backtracking but ended up getting upset at me again. Now I'm wondering if I'm being an ass because I could just agree to their request and bring her inside. Am I the asshole? Edit, since I keep getting asked this, my dog asks to go outside and is let in when she wants to come in and I make sure she is safe while out there. She is not being mistreated. And I'm glad you cleared that up at the end there. <laughs> and I love me some entitled neighbor drama. Absolutely not the asshole to me in this situation. And it's always one of them ones, you know, where there's always something in someone's backyard the neighbors want, you know. Usually it's a swimming pool and the comments are usually along the lines of do not let neighbors go into your swimming pool. It's an insurance bloody nightmare. Do not do it. If they hurt themselves, you could be in big trouble because it's your land, you're responsible for it. And the next piece of advice is usually followed by get a fence. <laughs> but Ilskon Sutio says, not the arsehole. Honestly, you shouldn't let them anyway. If they got hurt sledding on your land, you would be liable. They could make your homeowner's insurance pay for medical bills. <laughs> Bod says not the arsehole. Also, those kids could get hurt sledding on your property. They sound like the kind of neighbors that would sue you. Sorry, kids. Your parents blew it. Lollipop Throwaway says not the arsehole at all. Fuck your entitled neighbors. Those kids are probably embarrassed by their parents a lot. Not only are they unreasonable for asking that in the first place when they're using your land, but to call animal control. Fuck that, if that was me, a fence is being put up. And just to give you a taste of the comments that reply to that one, everyone's just going, fence, fence. <laughs> entitled neighbor post, everyone loves it. Fence, fence, chant with me guys. <laughs> Chiquita Banana Kush says, and quotes, ended up threatening to call animal control on me for having an out of control dog. And then says, not the asshole. They made threats to your dog and only backtracked because you said no to their shitty request. They showed their hostile side and what they'd do to your dog if you let them near her. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. And Beachin22 says, not the asshole. They don't have a right to tell you what to do with your pet on your property as long as there's no danger to the dog, blah, 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 and other caveats. You even try to compromise by letting them meet and connect with your elderly dog, who wouldn't even be anywhere near the kids. You have no obligation to support their lifestyle once for their kids, on your property, but on their terms. Also, even threatening to report your dog equals instant enemy zone in my eyes. They're basically threatening to remove a part of your family if you don't do what they want. That's harsh. Now, what do you guys make of this one? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And just a huge thank you for spending your time with me today. I know time is so important and for you to take the time out of your day, spend it with me. I find it absolutely incredible. As always, let me know what you're up to whilst you're listening. It means the absolute world and I will see you, you cheeky so-and-so, <laughs> in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love.